guys, what's up and welcome to this new lesson by me, Ranjit Krishnan Nair. And in this lesson, we'll start off with a new chapter called Electrostatics. And we'll basically see previous year questions asked in the NEET examination. So uh, previously, we were just studying wave optics and before that, geometrical optics. Now we'll study electrostatics. I'll uh, make a few lessons on this. So electrostatics is again a really, really important topic. Uh, quite a few questions can be and have been asked from this chapter. So without any further delay, let's begin. Hey, what's up? So before delving into it, let me just briefly introduce myself. Uh, I did my BTEC in electrical engineering from IIT Madras back in the year 2010. And I also cleared the J advanced and the J main exam. Uh, I, so I guess <laughs> let's actually get into the questions. So the question is, uh, suppose the charge of a proton and an electron differs slightly. One of them is minus E and the other is E plus delta E. If the net electrostatic force and gravitational force between the two hydrogen atom placed at a distance much greater than atomic size apart is zero, then delta E is of the order of. It's a very, very good question. Very, very conceptual question. So as usual, pause the video, attempt the question and then we'll discuss the solution. Alright, so I hope that you have attempted it. Uh, this is a very good question because it cons consists of basically two to three concepts. First concept is that of Coulomb's law. You should know how to apply it. The second is that of universal law of gravitation. You should know how to apply it. Also, also it has a third concept of uh, basically Newton's law of motion. Okay, that is you need to solve, you need to know how to solve equilibrium question because here the net force is zero. So, Simply, you can see that if two particles are kept like this, actually it's not particle, it's atom. So an atom consists of one proton and electron. One has charge minus E, another has charge plus E plus delta E. So if you calculate the total charge of an atom, the total charge of the atom can be found out by adding these two and you get the total charge as minus E plus E plus delta E that is equal to plus delta E minus E and plus E will get cancelled out. So you can think of atom as a particle with plus E charge like this. And uh, secondly, uh, you can also, for example, yeah, you can think that they are kept at a distance R, which is much greater than the atomic distance, atomic size. And then two types of forces are acting. One is the repulsive electrostatic force and other, another is the attractive gravitational force. Now the net force, since it is given to be zero, you just make the net force zero, you just write it down mathematically, that is force of gravitation minus force of electrostatics will be equal to zero because why minus? Because they are in opposite direction. So Fg will be equal to Fe. You just apply the universal law of gravitation and the Coulomb's law. The R square will get cancelled and you can calculate the delta E. Delta will come out to be this much. When you substitute the numbers, you know the value for gravitational constant. You know the K, which is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught. And you know the value of mass of hydrogen. So when you substitute it, you'll get the answer to be approximately 10 raised to the power minus 7 order. Okay, so option will be, option B would be the correct answer. Moving on to the next one. So here, uh, like the previous question was about uh, Coulomb's law. This is more about uh, pot electric potential. So it's a very good question and a very standard question, I would say. So uh, it's given that two metallic spheres of radius 1 centimeter and 3 centimeter are given charges. So this is charges here. Minus 1 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 Coulomb and 5 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 Coulomb respectively. If these are connected by a conducting wire, the final charge on the bigger sphere is the final charge on the bigger sphere is. So we have to find out these are the option as usual. Pause the video, attempt the question and then we'll discuss the solution. All right. So I hope that you have attempted the question. So the key concepts that you need to know are two basically. First, you should know what electric potential is and when you have to equate them. And second is you should know what charge conservation is and how to apply. So let's write down first draw the diagram. So we have two spheres like this with R1 and R2, one centimeter and three centimeter radius and with these respective charges. So given values are what are what is the given value you need? Uh, you basically know the two charges Q1 and Q2 and you also know the radius. Uh, I have converted into SI unit 10 raised to the power minus 2 meters because it was given in centimeters earlier. So total charge is equal to Q1 plus Q2, right? Now the net charge will be always conserved. So minus 1 plus 5 gives 4 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 coulomb. Now let's say this was the charge before distribution. Now we connect them. 
as is given in the question these are connected by a conducting wire once you connect them the charges will redistribute it such that the potential will become same so current will keep flowing till the potential in both the conductors remain same so you just equate the potential that is kq1 q2 kq1 by r1 is equal to kq2 by r2 basically the potential of these two so you will get q1 q2 by q1 is equal to r2 by r1 is equal to 3 so now you have two equation that is q2 by q1 is equal to 3 and you also have the charge conservation equation q1 plus q2 is equal to 4 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 on solving these two equations you can see that you get calculate q2 which is the charge on the larger uh, ball it is equal to 3 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 coulomb so option b would be the correct answer now let's move on to this question it's a very good question and a very very conceptual question uh, uh, as usual it is also a multi uh, concept question so in general if you are solving electrostatics questions inevitably generally you will be dealing with forces uh, most of the time if not every time so you should know newton's law work power energy and other concepts as well very well in order to solve the questions of electrostatics so let's see what this question is uh, two pith balls carrying equal charges are suspended from a common point by a strings by strings of equal length. Okay, the equilibrium separation between them is smaller. Now the strings are rigidly clamped. Uh, now the strings are rigidly clamped. So uh, like this. Okay, now you have to find the equilibrium separation. Okay, so instead if the earlier height was y, now the height is y by 2. So it is clamped here. You need to find the new distance. So I think the part of the question got cut out. So uh, these are the options that is R divided by cube root of 2. Uh, B is 2R by root 3. C is 2R by 3. And D is R by root 2 whole square. So as usual, attempt the question. Uh, pause the video and then we'll discuss the solution. Anyways, so I hope that you have attempted the question. So here we go. So. First of all, uh, the concept required is that of Coulomb's law and FBD and NLM. So first, let's draw the diagram. This is the this was by the way this diagram was given with the question. This is what we are drawing in the solution. So this was given in the question as well. Okay, now what is happening here is you are basically pulling these strings towards the center and you are constraining it like this. And now the early, now new height becomes y by two. So if you draw the free body diagram of the charge particle, then there will be tension, there will be uh, electrostatic force and there will be gravitational force. So there are three forces and it is in equilibrium. Now if it is in equilibrium, then obviously the resultant of the uh, electrostatic force and the gravitational force will be along the tension. Only then can it cancel the tension. Okay. So if it is along the tension, then you can use trigonometry that is it will make the resultant of the gravity and the electrostatic force will make angle theta like this, it will be along tension. So tan theta can be written as Fg, this force divided by Fe. Okay. Similarly, once you clamp it here, the angle theta will be made different. So let's call that angle phi. Okay, now here the perpendicular will become y by 2 and this distance will become x by 2. We are assuming that x is the total separation. Like b previously we assumed that r is the total separation. So in the triangle it will become r by 2. Now tan theta is equal to fg by fe like I previously established. You just substitute the value of force of gravity. Force of gravity is mg downwards and force of electrostatics is kq square by r square. So uh, that will be again equal to y by r by 2. This is y, this is r by 2 because that is equal to tan theta. Okay, so this is the first equation. Similarly, you can do the same thing for tan phi. It is again fg by fe. So fe and fg that is force of gravity remains same mg and uh, force of electrostatics it uh, gets changed. It is kq square by x square. So when you substitute you get uh, M mg x square upon kq square that is equal to y by 2 divided by x by 2. So that is the second equation. When you divide first and second equation and solve you get x is equal to r by cube root of 2. So option a would be the correct answer. That's how you solve this question. It's a very good question. Okay, then last question, uh, very, very simple, but still can be a little tricky question. Let's see what the question is. Uh, an electron is moving around the nucleus in hydrogen atom in a circular orbit of radius small r. Coulomb's force between the two. Coulomb force between the two is. 
So these are the four options. You may think it's an easy question, but please think hard before you select the correct answer. Okay, so as usual, pause the video, attend the question, and then we'll discuss the solution. All right, so I hope that you have uh, attempted the question. So it's a very simple question, actually. It's basically on Coulomb's law formula, and it's simple yet tricky. Okay, so here they are asking electron and nucleus, which means that charges are of opposite sign. There is a positive charge, there is a negative charge. Okay, plus and minus. So if that happens, the force is attractive, and when whenever the force is attractive, it generally uh, denoted by negative sign. For example, gravitational force is minus g m1 uh, m2 by r square. So here it will be k q1 q2 by r cube into r vector. Okay, there is a difference. It is actually r square in scalar form, but when it is vector form, you actually need a direction. So this. If you take r from here, this r vector upon r will become r cap, which is the unit vector. Okay, so the vector form should be this. You should remember this. So it will become k minus k e square r vector upon r cube. So d will be the correct answer. C will be the wrong answer because here it is r cap, not r vector. And uh, this will be wrong because uh, there is no negative sign here, and here also there is no negative sign. Plus there is no r vector as well. Okay, so that's pretty much in this video. I hope you really like this. If you did, then please, uh, you know, do the usual uh, upvote, comment, message, uh, share, rate, whatever. I have repeated it so many times that I get irritated nowadays. Anyway, so I'll, uh, uh, you know, uh, next few videos at least uh, I'll uh, do electrostatics. Then uh, please uh, send uh, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, what what was I saying? Yeah, please mention your uh, comments in the comments that what would you like the next uh, lesson to be. Uh, whoever has the most number of comments for a particular topic, then I'll make the videos for those lessons after, you know, I finish up electrostatics. So that's pretty much it. Uh, see you in my next video. Bye-bye.